Attention, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to be here in this masterclass. I hope you can hear me okay. Please, on a scale from 0 to 10, how is my audio? Mainly my audio, please. Today, I'll be talking about the what I consider at least the top five Lean Six Sigma tools um, so you can have a sense of the most important tools to be used in your project, okay? Hello, Alan. Hello, Samuel. Uh, Coflitex. Hello, Admire. Hello, Ilbu. No, no, no. There is no... This is an open. This is an open master class. It's an open Q and A. You can also ask questions. There is no certificate. Normally, people get almost addicted to certificates, right? And it's a it's a good point to talk about. It's a good point to talk about because the document the document itself it is very important. But please, more important than the document the document itself. It is what you are learning, right? It's very, very much important. Very much important, okay? So think about that as well. Right, okay. Let me check here. Type in our chat window. If you remember the five steps, you know, when we talk about a Lean Six Sigma project. Type here for me if you remember the five steps in a Lean Six Sigma project. Type here in our chat window. Thank you, Samuel. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, the make. Perfect. So, I have uh, prepared, you know, a list of five tools and a uh, one tool per phase yeah i think this is kind of expected right so let's get started on the fine phase the fine phase so the main objective of the fine phase is to guarantee that you are tackling that you are approaching that you are trying to solve a problem that is relevant relevant for whom relevant to the customer okay relevant to the customer so uh, for sure, for sure, Project Charter is extremely critical for that because Project Charter, we have problem statement and goal statement and mainly problem statement. We have the pyramid structure. So when we present the introduction of the, about the problem, then we need to list, you know, the most critical negative uh, effects or consequences if we don't solve that problem and here we are talking basically about financial negative consequence okay so uh, project charter for sure it is an important tool but today I will be highlighting process mapping okay process mapping so in this uh, live masterclass here <laughs> I will strongly recommend you to keep full attention when you are mapping your process because you must have a picture of the current state as accurate as possible. So please, process mapping is my first tool or technique if you prefer on the fine phase and why am I selecting today uh, process mapping because if you do not have a good picture in terms of current current process it is impossible to find the root causes okay it is impossible 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 yeah and uh, the the most important tool for process mapping is for sure uh, walking the process the most important tool to process mapping is a shoe as we say because you need to walk the process and after you walk the process it is strongly recommended that you that you represent 
your process step you can use like post-its you can use visio you can use mini tab workspace um, but there is one in a specific let me share here with you that i like very much it's one of my favorite tools and 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 uh, it's a free tool that is Quimo. okay Quimo. Uh, let me show you here let me know if you guys can see my screen yeah so if you type if you type quimo.com quimo.com uh, you have access to this very powerful very powerful tool okay oops quimo.com see and then you can sign up for free for free and then you can build your process mapping you know so you have the, the the start of the process you have the tasks you know you have the decision points you have the end of your process so once again i do strong there are many other many other apps you know that you can use to represent your process but here the most important thing to, to keep in mind is um, you need to have a good representation of the current process okay so it's not like it's not like the desired process or the improved process you know or the process from the 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 sop the standard operating procedure no 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 it is the current process the s is okay wonderful excellent oh i'm glad to know that samuel yes quimo.com let me see here i think i have and this is i mean we explore this very much in our in our green belt training yeah quimo um let me see if i can just give you guys a flavor it's very intuitive very much intuitive i mean anyone can build a process map so take a look here very easily very easily you can just go ahead and uh, start a new project after you create your account so when you start a new project you have like for example cheese bread process okay cheese bread process and then uh, I'm gonna create uh, we call BPMN I don't want to go very much into the technicalities you know but you come here the second one has to do with decision points you know this is a kind of general BPMN yeah And then when you click, you have the starting point here, see? And then you can easily drag and drop, you know, boom, that's it. So what's the first, the first step? Buy ingredients, buy ingredients. And after that, you prepare dog. After that, you bake cheese bread after that you can check if this is good you know if this is okay you can eat cheese bread yeah and you have here that's the end that's the end if it is not good you need to wait for example you can um, you can just to simplify you can take a look here yeah, again and then you can for example yeah it will not allow because this is according to bpmn this is this is wrong what i'm doing here you know but just for you guys to have a to have a sense okay uh we can we can do this i think it's easier bake cheese bread yeah bake 
is bad and then you can eat cheese bread yeah you can put the same for sure you know but just there is uh, there are some best practices in terms of uh, bpmn you know um, that you guys will find out very 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 helpful very helpful and this is because after that you can even use this for simulation you know things like that so if this is uh, okay oops no it's not this this is a this is a note you can add a note you know so you can simply observe your process you know and once again if you use uh quimo or you use uh Visage or you use uh excel if you use powerpoint if you use uh post-its you know no problem at all the most important thing is to have a good representation of the process as it is you know yeah, it's super simple, super, super simple. I am sure you guys will love it, okay? Once again, this is one recommendation. You can use any other, any other software. On a scale from 0 to 10, how clear it is for you the fact that I selected process mapping as your most important tool in the fine phase from 0 to 10, please. yeah perfect excellent and then we move and then we move we can move now to measure phase and in measure phase we have uh, something different to present that is a process capability and mainly if you are not a green belt uh, you don't know probably you don't know what is cpk ppk sigma level and these things okay but i want to highlight that it is impossible to have a measure phase without a process capability analysis so my recommendation in terms of uh, most important tool in measure phase is definitely definitely process capability okay so please take a look here take a look here and once again uh, don't focus very much on the technicalities here but uh, just for you to have an idea what is a process capability analysis I'm gonna generate here 100 data points yeah the mean is 10 standard deviation is 1 okay so a process capability analysis will check if your process is operating within within customer specifications you know so you have something like this something like this take a look It's a, my computer is a little bit slow probably because uh, my computer already detects that we are relatively close to carnival you know many people say that carnival in brazil yeah many people say that things start happening in brazil only after carnival this is not a reality for me for carlos nunes for the people that work for mf treinamentos because uh, we love to start the year you know very strong we have a lot of a lot of we had a lot of work since day one you know but many people say that in brazil things start happening you know after carnival so maybe that's why my computer is a little bit slow so i need to make my computer aware that here at mfopex we don't care a lot about carnival 
okay so see take a look we have here not only mean the mean is around 9.9596 yes we have a mean but on top of that we have a variation so I can check how does my process vary yeah and I can compare that against my customer limits so see lower spec limit upper spec limit and my question for you if you are a green belt you know that for sure but my question for you if you are not a green belt is do you think this process is <laughs> capable or not or this situation here seems good or not good do you think this car the car is well parked in the garage yes or not type here in our chat window do you think we have a good situation here or not or not what do you think what do you think This situation here is absolutely terrible, absolutely terrible. I am trying to change the, the, the color here. So see, everything in red indicates that I am operating below, below spec limit, you know? So remember that I want something between nine and 13, and I have a lot below 13. So the beauty of a good capability analysis is that you can check not only central location, but also spread and everything in relation to the specification limits. Okay, so that's the beauty of process capability analysis. So, so you can go ahead and check here, sigma level. Yeah, so sigma level, Z bench. And this process is one sigma. It is not six sigma, it is not four sigma, it is not three sigma, it is one sigma. And one sigma is terrible, 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 terrible. One sigma means 15% uh, of problems, of quality problems, you know, of uh, data points operating, you know, or products or services uh, operating uh, outside specification limits, okay? So please, once again process mapping second capability analysis okay my 32 my 32 in analyze phase in analyze phase is the famous ishikawa i know that ishikawa is pretty much to populate to organize our potential causes so ishikawa we are not talking about root causes we are talking about potential causes i know that yeah, so it's important to filter and select the most critical potential causes and then validate the root causes. I know that. But Ishikawa is so popular and so powerful to organize that I'm going to organize the potential cause that I'm going to select that. Okay? In Ishikawa diagram, we have two other names. We have cause and effect diagram and we have fishbone diagram. And why fishbone? Why fishbone? Take a look. If you just Google, you know, fishbone <clears throat> diagram, you will find, you will find, for example, this guy here. Take a look. Take a look. So we have the effect, the problem, and then we have the potential causes here. The potential causes here. The effect and the potential causes here. Yeah? So once again, this is extremely, extremely simple, extremely powerful. Ishikawa 
is my 32 for you guys. So define phase, my recommendation is process mapping, measure phase, capability analysis, analyze phase is Ishikawa or cause and effect diagram, or if you prefer, fishbone diagram, okay? So on a scale from zero to 10, okay? How much are we on the same page? Type here on a scale from zero to 10. Yeah, perfect, perfect. So now let's go to which phase? Define, measure, analyze, what's the next phase? What's the next phase? Define, measure, analyze, improve. And improve, we are talking about, Samuel, about corrective actions, right? Corrective actions. Um, in the past, I used to talk about impact effort matrix, impact effort matrix. But uh, I would like to reinforce, reinforce um, the importance of statistical validation, full statistical validation, okay? And I want to talk about stability, capability, and significance, right? So again, if you are not a green belt, maybe it will sound a little bit too technical, okay? But I hope you understand the essence of what I'll be talking about here. So you have a baseline, yeah, kind of before, and then you have your improved process, right? So let's suppose, let's suppose you have this for baseline, yeah? And then you have your improved process. Yeah. So let's suppose we are talking about lead time. Yeah, let's suppose we are talking about lead time. So you need to check three things. Okay, you need to check three things. Yeah, and let me show you guys how do you do that. do you do that four to ten for example yeah so I hope you can see my screen I prefer to start by stability analysis okay so what am i doing here i am checking that before my process was operating at this level and after my improvements the average has reduced and the variation has reduced as well please focus only on these two graphs here okay so before i had this behavior and after i got this behavior here so you can easily see that the mean has reduced and the variation has reduced as well, okay? So we are talking about stability, yeah? After that, I like to check capability. So see that before, before I had a process like this completely outside the garage and after I have a process like this operating within the garage you know within the garage yeah so here i have checked capability yeah and i like to check i like to check significance it has to do with the famous p value if p value is less than 0.05 then we have a good 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 argument a good evidence that the standard deviation for example has reduced in a way that is statistically significant 
the same for mean the same for mean you know because the mean is the p-value is less than 0.05 we have a strong argument that the mean has changed you know so this is very 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 important very important so please type here uh, in our chat window you know if you understood that we need to check you know uh, that we need to check uh, stability capability and significance okay three things three things I know this part here is a little bit um, maybe too technical you know but I want to reinforce that in my humble opinion on improved phase the most important tool or technique is this you know this package this trio of checking if on a stability point of view your process has uh, improved it means um, the standard deviation has reduced in this case the mean has reduced like to plot a control chart on top of that you need to perform your capability analysis again and you need to check uh, if your change is statistically significant okay statistically significant okay so if you got at least a high level at least a high level understanding of that type here for me yes if you got at least a high level understanding i know this is a little bit too technical and that's why we have like in our green belt many many sessions to explain this in details okay perfect right right what's the last phase type here for me what's the last phase type here for me what's the very last phase it is control control and normally Samuel I talk about control um, highlighting the like the transfer to process owner or FMEA or the importance of celebration but today I want to talk about I want to talk about control plan I want to talk about control plan and the beauty of control plan because when you find when you find that the root cause of burnt cheese breads the the, the root cause of, of burnt cheese breads is oven temperature when you when you when you conclude you find you validate that the root cause is oven temperature do you guys understand that i don't need i don't need to control i don't need to control i don't need to control burnt cheese breads anymore i'm not controlling y i'll be controlling x i'll be controlling the critical input is it clear is it clear so control plan has to do with controlling access controlling inputs not controlling output this is very much important and this is beautiful in fact because then the chances of your improvement being more sustainable increase a lot increase a lot increase a lot yeah to maintain the changes we provide uh, yeah to maintain the changes you need to control your access exactly exactly because we definitely do not to con want to control the effect you know and what do I mean by controlling the effect you know I want to share here a, a, a personal example of controlling the effect um, see I love to play soccer I love to play soccer yeah uh, but I do have I do have let me see let me, just to make it as real as possible you know I do have what they call um, uh, it's not it's not a herniated disc you know but unfortunately I am almost there 
I don't know if you guys know how is our spine, you know. Um, we have pretty much, pretty much what they call discs, you know, between like, we have bone, pretty much bones and discs, you know. So uh, when you have one disc that is not, uh, one or more discs that are not operating, you know, uh, very well, and I'll, I'll show you guys here uh, what is not, you know, very well. Let me see if I find here. Um, just to show you guys. Just to show a capability analysis of my, of my lower back, you know. I think you guys will find interesting. One second. Because I want to explore the, the concept of uh, the importance of controlling, the importance of controlling the um, of controlling the, the right axis, okay, the right axis, so let me show you guys here. I hope this is not too scary <laughs> for you guys and I, I hope you can understand that. Take a look here. <clears throat> so this is a, a this is a a normal a normal disc. See, this is a normal disc, like the format. See, and this is my <laughs> and this is my disc from L5 to S1. I don't know if you guys can see, but it is touching the nerves, you know? It is touching the nerves. So you guys can imagine like the amount of pain that it can cause, you know? And by the way, 30% of the population has some level of damages um, in one or more discs, okay? Unfortunately, this is kind, kind of normal, you know? So if you have lower back pains, um, very likely you have something like that. It's, it's, it's relatively um, frequent, you know? Okay, so why am I talking about that? What is, what is, the proper solution what do i need to control what do i need to control in order to have like a normal life and to walk and to play soccer without pain and by the way right now i am in an amazing let's say uh, period of my life in terms of uh, lower back pains you know uh, what do you, do i need to do i need to guarantee that the strength of the muscles that surround my spine is okay, yeah? And this is not uh, only gym. You can do gym, but I don't know if you guys know, gym is from outside to inside. The, the recommendation is Pilates, Pilates, from inside to outside. So you will be... Uh, guaranteeing that the muscles are strong enough from inside to outside. So are you guys following me? So what do I need to control? What do I need to control? I need to control the strength of the muscles that surround my lower back, my, my spine in the lower back region. 
you know does it make sense that's what i need to control so if i have uh, if i had a control plan where the ctq the y is my lower back pain i would definitely have there you know how strong my muscles close you know to l5 and s1 are and the action the action is pretty much at least twice a week Pilates. By the way, today I have Pilates. Pilates, Pilates, Pilates. Marcelo, what about when you travel? When I am not in my city, when I'm doing some consultancy, or when I'm presenting conferences and blah, 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 or vacation. Or vacation. What happens? What happens? These muscles, you know, they get weak. And then, and then the herniated disc starts pinching, you know, um, my nerves, you know. So, 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 normally, normally, I do use this guy here. <laughs> Take a look. This guy here. For massage, you know, massage in my lower back. It's amazing. This is extremely pleasant this is amazing this is amazing and by the way uh, there is no problem in using this when you don't have pain just to relax you know but if I focus too much on using this guy here you know what's the problem what's the problem you guys tell me you guys tell me type here in our chat window why should I do Pilates if I have this? You guys tell me. Why, why should I do Pilates if I have this? Why? Why can't I just, you know, bye-bye Pilates. I don't know if you guys know, but Pilates is not very much. It's not the most amazing thing, you know. It's not the most pleasant thing to do. You know, why can't I just stay with that? You know, that kind of, you know, relaxes and reduces and minimizes my pain um, versus pain, uh, pain for going to Pilates and going to the sessions and spending time there. Why? Why should I go to Pilates and not only focus on my lower back? Yeah. Yes, yeah, Samuel. So see what Samuel said. That's only the effect, not the cause, not the cause. Now, with massage, I am just treating the effect. And what's the problem of treating the effect? Normally, it is not sustainable. And normally, it gets worse very easily. And normally, normally, long term, long term, long term, it will shift to a next level. So the beauty of finding root causes, it's not only because you improve your process. No, you improve your process in a way that very likely is sustainable. Is sustainable. So it lasts. It lasts, you know, over time. Next month, next year, you know. So uh, I, th I hope this example you know, helped you to understand why am I picking control plan to control phase. Because if I start controlling my pain, I, I cannot control my pain. I cannot control my pain, philosophically speaking. The pain is there and or it's not there. I cannot control raining. I cannot control that. It's a Z, it's not yeah, an X, you know? And the pain, in fact, it's a Y. It's a, it's, it's a response, it's an output. So pain, Y, is a function of what? Mm, is a function of the condition of my disc, yeah? So if I really, really, really go to the root cause, maybe a surgery, but I am afraid. <laughs> I am very much afraid of a surgery uh, in my spine, you know? Or if I really, really, really go to, to the root cause, 
Maybe something wrong that I did when I was a child. I used to play indoor soccer. Indoor soccer, I don't know if you guys are familiar. It's like there is no grass. So the, in, the level of impact is huge. It's insane, you know? Almost everybody that played indoor soccer at some point in life, you know, has some lower back or knee knee problems, you know? Uh, so, But I cannot go back to the past. The root cause maybe is there, but I cannot go back to the past. So maybe the root cause, if I really attack that, would be a surgery. No, but surgery is impact effort matrix. You know, it's very, very high effort. So I'll not go for that. Okay, so what's the closest, you know, action uh, or the closest root cause? Mm, to guarantee that the muscles that surround the spine are strong enough okay so let's let's guarantee that they are strong enough you know so i need to control how strong these muscles are yeah so if i control the causes the effect would automatically yes if you have a good transfer function if you if you've built your equation properly if you know this cause and effect relationship now you control only x you control X. And that's the beauty of a good, you know, a Lean Six Sigma project. Because after you run your project, you know that you can anticipate the problem. Yeah. And if for some reason you know that you are not controlling your X, you can expect problems in your Y. And there is value in that. There is value. Because then you can kind of prepare yourself to at least contain, contain the pain, yeah? Uh, Barnabas, remove dependence, yeah? So again, process mapping, capability analysis. Ishikawa, the, the, the full statistical validation for process improvement and control plan are today, in my humble point of view, uh, running Lean Six Sigma projects for more than 20 years, the top five Lean Six Sigma tools, the tools that you, like the mandatory, mandatory tools that you must have in your heart if you want to run a proper Lean Six Sigma project, okay? I hope that was helpful for you. Thank you so very much for joining me live here. If you are taking this session, uh, record it okay know that you are equally special equally um, you know uh, critical for us you know you are definitely you are critically important for us as well and I truly truly hope that these words uh, inspire you to run projects okay to run real Lean Six Sigma projects okay thank you Samuel thank you Barnabas Thank you so much, Admire. Thank you so much, Fidel. Thank you for joining this session and everybody else. Talk to you guys. Bye-bye.